Hey everyone, I hope you had a nice week. I am so excited to show you my Inquisitor Outlaw build that I've created. I went through numerous missions testing out weapons that performed really well, but this is my personal favorite of the bunch, and the one that I would recommend to anyone out there trying to make a gunslinger for themselves. So without wasting too much of your time, let's get right into it. Let's start with the loadout like usual. I went with the Mark IV Dueling Sword because I found managing horde encounters to be much easier with this over the Blaze Swords. But you can use whatever melee weapon you prefer here. I just really found this more useful when it came to clearing out hordes quickly and efficiently. For my perks, I went with damage to maniacs so I can one shot them in succession and damage to unyielding enemies. Along with that, I rolled a great set of blessings on my sword. The first one being shred, which will tally my bonus crit chance on chained hits, and uncanny strike which applies rending on enemy weak spot hits. These chained together will pretty much kill everything in front of you with ease. A majority of the time, if enemies are in your face, simply light chaining will turn you into a blender. Now for my secondary, I chose the Columnus Infantry Autogun. This gun shreds apart pretty much everything, and it's a ton of fun to use. I managed to roll my perks to do damage to Maniacs, and I also went with increased range critical strike chance for maximum crit potential. For my blessings, I went with Fire Frenzy for the close damage boost whenever we kill an enemy at close range, and Dum Dum which throws on more close range damage on repeated hits. The both of these blessings will actually let you sit beside your team and output a ton of damage while focusing on key threats. Whenever I saw any specialist units closing in, I'd pop my abilities and let my bullets fly down range. This build has a ton of potential for taking on multiple targets, and this gun just lets you do it quicker and with better accuracy. The curios I went with will probably differ a little bit from yours, but I had one toughness curio and two max health curios, along with boost in health and toughness, followed by some toughness regen speed and stamina regen. Overall though, I wanted to maintain a fair balance of survival if I needed to fend for myself. Toughness regen shouldn't really be an issue, so if you want to exchange one of them for some resistance, that wouldn't be a bad option. Now with that out of the way, I wanted to go over my talent tree and how we can implement our utilities to our advantage on the battlefield. We could start off with our main ability since this will be universally flowing with our build synergy. I'm using Scryer's Gaze to focus my damage flow, and to keep my criticals managed by my finesse bonuses. For every second in Scryer's Gaze, we gain 1% damage to a maximum of 30%. This will also last for 10 seconds after the ability's use as well. The best part of this is once we activate it, we can fire away with our auto gun, and any kills that we get will slow the buildup of our peril that we generate. To make sure that we can survive while we're using it, I went with Endurance as my modifier. This will grant us 20% toughness damage reduction whenever we activate our ability. And on top of that, with Precognition we can gain a full second with any weak spot kills. But this modifier has another interesting part to it. For each second that we're in our gaze, we gain 1% towards our finesse damage to a maximum of 30%, and this too will last for 10 seconds after we use our ability. For those that don't know what finesse is, finesse is your stat that determines the amount of strength that your weapons can deal when you make a critical hit or a weak spot hit. This is huge since both of our weapons can apply a crazy amount of crits because of their own finesse bonuses. Now another way I want to use my abilities to my advantage is with a sail. A sail is terrific for taking out hordes whenever we don't want to burn through our ammo. Since we don't have any other passives giving us options with our ammo consumption, this is a great alternative. For my blitz modifiers, I went with ethereal shards to be able to pierce multiple targets, and quick shards to be able to replenish my charges a little bit faster. The order that I chose is going to be Seer's Presence. Again, this is just to grant everyone in Coherency some cooldown reduction for their abilities. Now to use a sail a step further, I chose to use Disrupt Destiny as my main keystone ability. This creates a nice little fun mini game that you'll have whenever you're scanning for enemies. Every second, an enemy within 25 meters of you will have a chance to be marked. If you kill this marked target, you gain a bunch of bonuses. You'll gain toughness, movement speed, and you get a precision bonus for 15 seconds. Your precision bonus will give you 1% damage, 2% critical damage, and 2.5% weak spot damage. This can do some devastating damage to any specialist that crosses you as long as you're maintaining your kills on marked targets. To make sure that we can gain stacks efficiently, I took Cruel Fortune so whenever we get a weak spot kill, it'll give me two stacks of Disrupt Destiny. And with this, I also took Perfectionism which bumps our maximum stack count to 30 stacks total. The reason I say to use the sail here is that you can right click and toss your shard at a track target rather than expunge every shard to hopefully hit them. This will help you get to max stacks much quicker and it will save you the ammo for when you really need to use it. Obviously, use it when you can, but feel free to shoot when you have to. A sail can be great for when your target jumps into a horde, because then you can spam into them and drive your stacks up while crowd clearing. Okay, so now that I told you how to effectively use your abilities to your favor, I want to talk about the passive choices that I chose. Starting off with Battle Meditation. This should help us a ton whenever we're using our gaze. While we're killing massive hordes with our autogun, occasionally some peril will be quelled instantly. 
This will help us get more seconds in, allowing for more damage in return. Empathic Evasion will help us since our crit chance is quite high with this build. Every time we manage to score a critical hit, we can dodge through a ranged attack for one second. This will help fight suppression from gunners and reapers pretty easily as long as you remain aggressive. I took Kinetic Deflection for an additional use for our block. Since we only have two stamina blocks for our melee weapon, this is a nice option so we don't have to take any unnecessary damage. Since the sail counts as a warped attack, I grab Malefic Momentum for the damage boost to all warped attacks for 8 seconds after a non-warp base kill. This is easily proc with both of our main weapons at hand. Metal will keep our toughness replenished as well as give us some movement speed whenever we gain a critical. Again, this is going to be a heavy crit build so you should be fast and healthy. I found Mind in Motion to be very useful for keeping up with the team, especially when we're spraying down a horde with a sail and need to quell for a bit. Since movement speed is another factor that we have working for us in this build, I wanted to make sure it wouldn't go to waste. I also factored in using a sail for beefier targets like gunners and ragers, so perfect timing would be of more use to us if we needed to swap off our auto gun for additional damage. Gaining crits with all of our weapons will just increase our warp damage even further. This is really helpful for whenever we need to throw a shard on somebody with a mark on them. The shard should kill them in the first hit so long as it isn't a specialist enemy. With Quietude, I found that Scryer's Gaze can have a completely different function. So whenever we activate it, we'll gain toughness damage reduction. But now, whenever that peril drops, we'll gain any toughness that we may have lost. This will also assist our quelling when it comes to a sail spamming, just keeping our survivability up. Soul Stealer will be our bread and butter when it comes to replenishing any of our toughness really quickly. Since we have a bunch of bonuses going towards warp damage, any kills with a sail will replenish our toughness. And this synergizes really well with Quietude for maximizing our toughness regen. I took True Aim for the easy guaranteed critical hit. This should be incredibly easy to proc with the auto gun, and this is why you'll see so many targets die really quickly. Hitting weak spots will only strengthen us further, so aim with precision. And lastly, Warp Rider for the 20% increase for all sources based on our current peril. If you use Scryer's Gaze in the middle of a huge push, your damage will carry you out of it. I wanted my ability to have multiple functions with this build so you aren't only relying on it just for spraying with your auto gun. You can use it whenever and with whatever in any scenario. For my operative modifiers, I wanted to complement this build by keeping our strengths buffed. I have boosts in crit chance, health, toughness, movement speed, range damage, and damage reduction. And along with that, we have inspiring presence to assist everyone including myself in replenishing toughness. I've been working really hard on this build for weeks as gun psychers are not usually my go-to pick for missions. But seeing the raw damage output and challenging myself to change things up led me to enjoy this way more than I anticipated. Trying to break out of the norm for me is always a fun challenge and it keeps the game fresh for me whenever I'm feeling a little burnt out. I recommend giving this a shot if you're trying to build a gun cycle for yourself. Anyways, I'm going to go play a few more rounds, but until next time, thanks for watching. My name is Zen and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the match. Isolating targets.
Charge at a Necron bug. Crawl off the head. Hurry
Amigas. There's no protocol for that. Go on! We'll face this fury! Engaged. Sniper neutralized.
space station. Do you mind if I make an observation? I fear... I do not believe your bone and implant is working correctly. It goes get rely on surprise. How we react to that is our choice.